thought I'd do a quick video showing how I do the swirly pattern. Um, so I just saw a video from Broken Arrow Pottery showing a way of doing it with two fingers. But I've always done it with three, two on the outside, one on the inside. So I thought I'd just hop on and do a really quick demonstration of it. Uh, I'm going to do a great job of centering this because this is going to be sacrificial. But very quick cylinder. So, the way I position my hands is one finger on the inside, two on the outside, and the pressure comes just from the inside finger, the outside finger support, and you bend it out and then move up the clay like that. And you want to get one pattern per rotation. So it would be like that, and basically you'd make, well, because you, it would bend out, but each outside finger would sit in the groove of the other finger on the previous rotation, so it's, you kind of as you go up one rotation, you'd be one finger's groove worth above, which would make more sense um, when I show you on a an actual piece. So what I'll do is I will throw a medium swirly mug So, again, yeah, what I would do, triangle turning tool, just neaten up the bottom. Rib to smooth the outside, get rid of some of the texture. Get the walls nice and saturated. Ideally, get all the clay gunk off your fingers. That position. Fingers on the outside supporting, fingers on the inside bending out. And then once you hit the right amount to bend, move your hands up together. You want to release the pressure slowly on the last one before you get to the top. You don't want to have it at full pressure because you will throw the rim off completely. So release as you get to that point. And then what I do is I bring the two fingers together and compress and um, yeah, compress and center the rim. I see, firstly, you want your mugs to be round anyway. Well, I do. Uh, I mean, you can have them wobbly with character, but it's much nicer to have the rims round and much easier to trim if the rim and base are centered together. So I'll do. And then that will go in the given grip and be centered. Whereas if you don't release the pressure, the whole thing will go sideways at the top and there's not really much bringing it back up at that point. So yeah, that position, increase the pressure until you get the bend you like move up. This is the part that takes practice to work out what speed you need for what wheel head speed because it's the two of those you've got to match. You can do it without slowing the wheel down if you really want. Um, you just have to move your hand really quickly. Much easier at a slower speed to match the two of them. Um, and then yeah, as your top finger reaches the rim, release the pressure slightly to the point that when the inside finger reaches the rim, you're not really bending it out anymore. 
then compress it between the two fingers and then I leave it on a bat overnight to firm up a bit and then I kind of burnish the outside smooth um, because again you know there, there will be marks from your finger and they're much easier to get them out there than any other point once it's leather hard. I will also trim the rim down slightly and round it with a, I'll just use a strip of plastic from the bags that the clay comes in. Um, you can do it now but I find that they stay rounder and then if they're still on the bats you can trim them perfectly easily the next day um, and you get a better rim for it just because the clay's, uh, clay at leather hard burnishes really nicely but also you can trim it to razor sharp if you wanted to whereas throwing it like that and getting it round is a bit trickier can be done but um, if you're in the studio every day and can control the drying then it's much easier to do it that way